there's a ton of great space games out there, so I wanted to revisit this topic. Now in the previous video, I highlighted a bunch of different space games, most of which I've played for a lot of hours. However, it's literally impossible to include all games in a video like this without it being hours long. But as the Steam sound is still running and it's going to be available until the 4th of January, well here's a section of games that you might want to try out in the new year. All of these have been recommended by people who watched the previous video. The suggestions from the comments section, a lot of these I haven't played myself, but people have spoken very highly of them. So let's start with Imperium Galactic Survival. It's currently priced at £8.37, and it's a space-themed survival game that combines exploration, construction and combat in a vast universe. Set in a galaxy filled with diverse systems, planets, moons and asteroid fields, it offers extensive exploration beyond traditional survival game settings. Players engage in intricate base building using a cubic construction system with various geometric shapes. Different types of structures require specific blocks, and a core or starter block is essential for construction. The game's resource management is complex, necessitating a careful planning and understanding of different components. Combat, meanwhile, is a significant element, especially in space battles where players face AI-controlled enemies. Now, in case you're wondering, Imperion offers both a single-player and multiplayer mode, allowing for cooperative gameplay and shared strategies. Continuously updated by its developers, the game is ambitious in scope, aiming to enhance and expand its features over time. In essence, Imperium Galactic Survival is a complex, engaging survival game set in a dynamic space environment, blending construction, resource management and combat, and yeah, it all looks pretty nice visually too. Now, this one is a personal recommendation. I've used Space Engine so many times over the years, it's impossible for me to count just how many times I've actually used it. Whilst this isn't a game as such, it nonetheless is an amazing piece of software. Space Engine, then, is a comprehensive universe simulator that offers players an opportunity to explore a realistic, scientifically accurate universe. It features a vast array of celestial, uh, celestial objects, including galaxies, around about 100 million or 100 billion, I do believe, uh, stars, planets and more. Both from real astronomical data and procedurally generated places as well. The software allows seamless exploration from planetary surfaces to the depths of intergalactic space, all modelled on a true one-to-one -one scale. It incorporates realistic physics and a flight simulator mode, enhancing the authenticity of space exploration. The game's modding support adds further depth if you want to try that out, enabling players to create and share their own celestial objects and spacecraft. Right now, the dis this is uh, discounted by 50% and is priced at £14.99. Star Sector is the only game on this list that isn't on Steam. Now, right up front, I've never played this game and I know very little about it. What's included here I've had to research, and that said, the game does look very compelling nonetheless. Star Sector then is a single-player open-world space game combining 4X strategy and real-time strategy elements. Set in the Persian Sector, a once thriving part of the human empire known as the Domain, the game takes place 206 years after the collapse of the intergalactic gates at isolated colonies and led to a decline in advancing technology. Players start with limited resources and a small fleet, with the potential to expand their influence through exploration resource management and strategic combat. The game features a variety of planets, each with unique resources and challenges, and in an economy system where players are trade, smuggle or engage in piracy. Now, combat is a core aspect, with customizable ships requiring tactical management of weapons, shields and movement. Players can build and manage fleets, engage in battles and establish colonies, developing industries and building their own ships. The game is still currently an early access and has been that way for a very long time. It's likely why the game isn't released on Steam, at least I'm assuming so, but it's also fair that the game has been discounted pretty heavily. I do believe it's around about $15 at the moment. Visually, the game is very distinct, taking place entirely in 2D. Uh, yeah, this one is certainly intriguing to say the least, and whilst I haven't played it yet, like I say, Check out the comment section in the previous video and you can see this is mentioned again and again by many different people. Now, The Outer Wilds is a game that really shouldn't have been missed from my previous list. It's currently priced at £12.59 with a 40% discount and this really is one of those games that you'll hear people talking about again and again. It's just impressed people overall. 
It's a single-player adventure game set in a compact, intricately designed solar system. The game revolves around exploration, puzzle-solving and surviving in a variety of unique and dynamic planetary environments. Each planet has its own gravity and challenges, ranging from cyclones and oceanic worlds to crumbling crusts on lava-threatened planets. The core gameplay mechanics is a 20-minute time loop. When the sun goes supernova or the player dies, they are reset to the start of the loop. Players navigate this universe in a resilient autopilot-equipped spaceship, capable of 360-degree maneuvering. The game also features a spacesuit with limited oxygen and a jetpack, emphasizing resource management and survival in hostile environments. The player's objective is to piece together a timeline of events to prevent the solar system's destruction. Outer World's End combines elements of discovery, survival and narrative-driven gameplay in a space setting. Hot Space Shipbreaker is a space-based shipbreaking simulation game developed by Blackbird Interactive. And yes, this one does have a lot of uh, similarities in terms of visual aesthetics to the Homeworld series. Very different game nonetheless so. So players assume the role of a shipbreaker in the distant future, tasked with dismantling decommissioned spaceships for salvage. The game starts with simple ships and gradually introduces more complex and larger ones, presenting various challenges. Now, you've got to be careful when cutting apart these ships, uh, cut off the wrong parts, and you can explode or cause massive decompression and essentially kill yourself. So pulling ships apart, you need to take things like engines, reactors and crew compartments, and then sort the salvage materials into different categories for recycling, reuse or scrapping. The game is set against a backdrop of corporate exploitation, and the game also weaves a narrative around the workers' riots. The player starts off heavily indebted to the company, and you need to work over time to reduce this debt. Over the course of your employment, you'll get to use various different tools such as uh, cutters, scanners and tethers. Pulling apart ships in this game is very interesting and, well, it's actually very well put together. This one I have played and enjoyed quite a lot. With a 58% discount and currently priced at £12.59, this could certainly be worth a look if you're after something a little different. Now, going back in time quite a bit. FTL are faster than light. I do believe this comes from, what, 2012, 2011, around about that time. At just £1.74 then, this really is a steal. If you've never tried it out before, now could be the time. It's a single-player roguelike space strategy game and starts you out with a small ship called the Kestrel, a customizable spaceship manned by your human crew. Now, players can unlock additional ships, each with distinct layouts and capabilities. The game does feature alien races, and you'll encounter these along your journey. Exploration is a key component here, with sectors filled with beacons leading to random encounters like enemy ships, solar flares and traps. You'll need to make best use of your ships, its equipment, its systems and your crew in order to get past all of this and survive it. Ship upgrades are crucial for survival, offering new weapons and systems, and the game's roguelike nature means death is permanent, making each playthrough a very unique. FTL's challenging gameplay demands strategic thinking and decision-making, and its pixel-art graphics, even after all this time, what, 10 years, 11 years, still look very good and, you know, really do suit the narrative and the style of the game. This one, then, is certainly worth a look. And this Space 2 has a massive 75% discount right now and is currently priced at £8.74. This one is a 4X strategy game set in a vast space universe where players lead a civilization to interstellar supremacy. Now, I haven't actually played this one myself, so I don't know how much it compares to games like Stellaris. But this one got a lot of mentions in the previous video, so it might be worth checking out if you do like the 4X style games. Now, key features include intricate resource management and comprehensive technology trees, and a dynamic political system where different ideological parties influence empire policies. Endless Space 2 has a deep economic system, a whole load of warfare, and it also features trade routes and fluctuating markets. Both single-player and multiplayer modes are available, catering to different gameplay preferences, so one to take a look at if you're into 4X games. If you're into more combat oriented uh, shooter type games, though, it could be worth taking a look at Star Wars Squadrons. Now, this one currently has mixed reviews on Steam, but this is a game that I actually liked back when it came out. Either way, at a price of just £1.75 right now, it's an easy risk to take. 
Squadron's Den is an action-packed space dogfighting game. It features a single-player campaign that allows the player to experience both the narratives of the New Republic as well as the Empire. And players can join both sides here they experience the game through both the eyes of the Republic as well as the Empire. There's also a multiplayer mode here, that's something I never actually tried it out myself. At this point I'm not sure how busy those servers would be, it might well be that it's very difficult to actually find uh, some matches, but this does include modes that are similar to death matches. There's also a variety of other multiplayer uh, modes in there as well. Squadrons is also compatible with VR, which if you are into a VR, this could really add to that immersion. And lastly, we come to the Dyson Sphere program. This only has a small discount right now, just 10% off, yet it's highly recommended by players. Steam has a rating of overwhelmingly positive, which is a very good sign. That's both recent reviews as well as long-term reviews. Right now, the game is priced at £13.94. It's a single-player PC game set in a procedurally generated space environment, focusing on resource management and automation. The core objective is to build a Dyson Sphere to power a supercomputer. Players start at the homeworld with basic supplies and a robot, initially gathering resources manually, but as they progress up the tech tree, they can construct factories, refineries and storage facilities. A significant aspect of the game is the automation of resource extraction, processing and distribution, and this involves creating an efficient system of machines, conveyors and energy management to handle all of these things. Players use a replicator to craft building supplies from raw materials, then construct and place these structures strategically. The game challenges players to optimize their base layout and resource management strategies, expanding operations to different planets with varying, uh, varying conditions. The gameplay emphasizes learning and adaption with a focus on efficient system design and resource optimization, and as players progress, they must manage supply lines and energy production across multiple planets continually refining their strategies. So that's it for this uh, video. We got a whole bunch of games that you may want to check out for uh, the new year. Something to play on over the break. I do want to thank everyone who left the suggestions in the previous video. Very helpful to see all those comments and I'm sure yet again I've missed a few off the list but as I said it's impossible to include absolutely everything without the video going on for an inordinate amount of time. At any rate I hope you all have a great new year. And I'll catch you soon.